Hey everybody, welcome to What About The Game. Today I'm going to be talking about the Count Lucenor on the Nintendo Switch. Following on with a horror theme, straight from the disappointing Don't Knock Twice, Merge Games have come in to publish The Count Lucenor, a retro-style 2D adventure game with an eerie vibe. It was released on PC last year, but has now found its way onto the Nintendo Switch eShop. Based on the 16th century book of just about the same name, I'm not entirely sure about how faithful it is, but this retro style romp follows the story of Hans, a young boy seeking adventure. On his 10th birthday, he is devastated to find out that he has no birthday presents from his poor mother, as they both live a life of poverty since their father left to fight a war. Now this is where, right off the bat, I struggle to feel sympathy for the main character who throws a temper tantrum, says nasty things to his mother, and runs away from home, just because they are poor. He's not adventuring to make his family life better, he just wants to make his own life better. As soon as you have control of your character, you can remedy some of his faults by helping people on your way to adventure. It's not long before things start to get creepy though, as Hans wakes up in a nightmare-like world where things have become genuinely creepy. After bypassing some grotesque sights and dangers, you'll soon be led to a mysterious castle. As Hans enters the castle, he is met by a blue kobold, who wants to test the young boy as to whether he is worthy to inherit the titular count's treasure. To do so, he only needs to guess the kobold's name. Sounds simple, right? Not quite. To find the kobold's name, you need to find letters hidden in the rooms of the castle, of which involve solving some sort of puzzle. Considering this is the biggest aspect of the game, it's a shame to say that they're all really quite simple whether pushing boxes around or finding items to use, they're not all going to challenge you, at least not until right up to the very end when you finally put the kobold's name together. The gameplay has been commented on by the press as being like a Legend of Zelda type game, but to be honest I'm not seeing that, to me the Count Lucenor is more of a retro 2D Resident Evil with a more adventure focus, trapped in a castle with few but deadly enemies and solving puzzles. Unlike Link with his sword and the myriad of weapons in his arsenal, Hans is pretty much helpless and can only hide from enemies that lurk around the castle. One core mechanic of the game is the fact that most of the corridors and rooms of the castle are pitch black. You collect candles which you use to help you find your way around. The light doesn't stretch far though, but you have the ability to place candles on the floor to stay there forever. Not only does this let you see bad guys in advance, but can be used in a sort of breadcrumb trail to see where you've been in a sometimes maze-like castle. As you start to pick up letters, you'll notice things around the castle starting to change or develop. You'll meet people in the hub area and in the corridors, who do different things at different times, give you things or sell stuff, or give you a task. It makes the game feel quite more intricate than you'd otherwise think based on appearance. Sadly, The Count Lucenor isn't a particularly long game, and will only last you a few hours, which is a shame, as an expanded version would have been lovely. What does extend the length though is just how punishing it can be. The Count Lucenor is old school baby. Autosaves, what's that? Just as I pointed out it gives vibes of a 2D wacky Resident Evil and the saving mechanic is very reminiscent. If you die, you go back to your last save. So save often I hear you say. Well remember the scarce ink ribbons in Resident Evil? Well in the Count Lucenor they've been replaced with gold coins that you use to bribe a crow to save your game. While you can find coins here and there, you need to use them to buy other things too, not only saving your game. At first I was distraught about time wasted, dying and so on, but it adds so much tension to the game that I actually grew to love it. Surprisingly, I think there is room for replayability in Lucenor as, even though I can't confirm, there are different ways to go about it, secrets to find and so on. How many replays? Well, I'm not sure, but if I had the time I would certainly give it at least one more playthrough. Some problems I have are with the presentation. While there are lots of creepy weird imagery in the Count Lucena, I really quite disliked the character design, especially the main characters, Hans. There's just something about his design that's quite off-putting, something in his face and his spindly arms. The environments are pretty fine though, but it's not the best looking retro style game that I've seen. Sound design is also pretty middle of the road with little music and some okay sound effects that try to enhance the creepy factor. Overall. The Count Lucenor is an interesting game to say the least. It didn't leave a good initial impression, but once I'd rocked up to the castle, it began to gel with me. I enjoyed sneaking around the dark castle, seeing it develop over time. 
If it was a bit longer, I probably would have come out loving this game, but its short length makes it seem like wasted potential. It left me wanting much more. It's an intriguing game and really quite unique, even if it can be quite simple at times. I personally think it's worth a playthrough or two, but the price is maybe a little high for the couple of hours you're going to get with it. Okay guys, if you've enjoyed this review, be sure to like and subscribe, that would help me out. You can read the Count Lucener at whataboutthegame.com and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to. All the links are below. Thanks guys, bye bye.